Maybe a week ago it was, I saw an article on Wii U Daily, I believe it was, basically saying, hey, you know, the Wii U's not selling that good, Nintendo needs to get their act together and, you know, get rolling. And one of the first comments I saw, it was probably the first beneath the article, I didn't even read the article really, and it was some guy saying, oh, how could you, I thought you guys loved Nintendo. And the guy who wrote the article basically said, hey, we're, if the Wii is not selling good, we're not going to do you know damage control and act like nothing's happening if something's wrong with the way Nintendo is running the system. And it's really kind of, kind of silly. It's like, well, what do you expect them to do? Of course they're going to have something to say about it. They should have something to say about it. And I do think there's people are freaking out a bit. To the, to the extent that I've seen people like, oh, you know, Iwata or Reggie should be fired, or Nintendo needs to rename the system, or it's like, okay, Nintendo's not going to do, like, a knee-jerk type overreaction like that, because Nintendo knows how to, uh, to go into survival mode when the system's not performing properly, but that's going to take a little time, and the thing is, we just basically went through this sort of cycle with the 3DS, where the 3DS came out, all the you know all the fans bought it, and they basically carried all the weight until there was all the, all the big games that mo the masses wanted to play were available on it. You know Mario and so forth, and then and you know once they they had to drop the price because they ser they seriously overestimated the demand for 3DS based on the reaction it got at E3 2010. Uh, so. Here, I really don't think the price of the system is going to be a problem, uh, especially if the uh, the other eighth gen systems are going to be as expensive as they, as I'm expecting them to be. Because I don't think they're go I don't think Sony's going to launch a six hundred dollar system again. But you know, if it's one or two hundred dollars more than the Wii U, you know, that's that's gonna that's a serious consideration to make uh, alongside with the uh, the game selection and the feature set and so forth. Now, what I think Nintendo is Nintendo's really sort of in a sticky situation because they're basically going through the same growing pains that Sony and Microsoft already went through at the beginning of the seventh generation in terms of, and a lot of third party developers. There was a real sort of, uh, I guess, sort of gro growing period of uh, getting a, of all these developers building up their HD resources. And we didn't notice it so much then because both all the Microsoft and Sony and all the developers that were developing for them were sort of going through that trouble at the same time. Like, I know like Ubisoft, for instance, basically bankrolled their entire development uh, during that in HD based on the success of really hit hit casual Wii games like, uh, what, Big Top Games, what was it, or, or whatever that, Carnival Games. So... Basically, Nintendo's going through having to develop HD resources for the first time, and it's like, really, the only thing worse than them having launched the system early, as early as they did, and not have a whole lot of the big hitter, you know, Nintendo uh, first and second party games ready, the only thing worse than that would possibly be to actually wait even longer. Uh, it's sort of, a, I really can't... As much as they they weren't ready in terms of having a lot of like you know Pikmin three or a new Super Mario three D platformers, or, uh, I really can't imagine things being and tremendously better if they had waited till about now because they launched systems you know like in the spring like three D S launched uh, about about now two years ago launched late March twenty eleven. The thing I see is that. People are saying, you know, oh, the, you know, Pikmin 3 should have been there. A 3D Super Mario platformer should have been there. Then you know, the next-gen Legend of Zelda should have been there, you know, around launch window. But remember how an E3 2010 was basically a perfect E3 for the Wii. They basically... The, the showcase they had for Wii at E3 2010 was basically the perfect Nintendo first and second party lineup they could possibly make. It was basically a dream lineup in E3 2010. And after that, that was basically it, except for maybe Mario Party 9 and uh, Zelda Skyward Sword. After E3 2010, 
first and second party Nintendo support basically just vanished. And people were saying, what the heck, you're not supporting this system, there are no first and second party games coming out, there are no big games coming out in 20, 2011 besides, you know, Zelda and Mario Party, and you could argue how big Mario Party is, and meanwhile, your new system isn't even ready yet. You know, you'd, you'd like to have, ideally, you'd like your the system you're on to fully play out your hand with that system up until the very end with big hitting games, and then go straight into your next system with a whole bunch of really desirable games to get peop as many people on board as early as possible like they did with the Wii. And the thing is, okay, either you want, either Pikmin 3 and the Super Mario uh, 3D platformer are going to be there. They could have been there on launch day for the Wii, but then you basically, they probably would have had to have abandoned major development on the Wii, the original Wii, even earlier than they did, which... I mean, E3, uh, 2011, people were, there was lots of saying like, oh, 2011, that's the year Nintendo died, Wii sales are down, but they had a record-breaking Black Friday that year. They they sold like, what, half a million units just on Black Friday alone that year, and they actually did a good year of sales in 2011, even if the, their, the sales rates were lower, you know, week to week and month to month compared to previous years when the Wii was just a huge hit, like a, like a super fad. Basically, what I think is that people need to stop freaking out, and and I'm not the thing is I'm not excusing Nintendo, because I basically went th I think I I don't have a Wii U, but I feel like I'm familiar with what Wii U owners are going through because I was out there freezing my butt off for the 3DS, and basically I purchased an incomplete system. I and like psych there's. Almost in my in my head, I almost want to think that at some point, I that I that the system I have now is not the system I bought on launch day. I feel like I at some point I upgraded to a 3DS Plus or 3DS Lite or something, because what is my the 3DS that's in my that I have now is the same 3DS I bought on launch day. It's a totally different system. Its capabilities are so enormously advanced now compared to what I bought back in 2011. And we have Nintendo launching in uh, Wii U. One same same sort of thing with 3DS, where they didn't the naming convention really didn't explicitly differentiate the product lines enough. Uh, like you know, GameCube to Wii, obviously a different product line. Uh, Wii to Wii U, a lot of people thought that the Wii U was just the gamepad as an add-on to the original Wii. I don't think that. That made that caused some confusion. I don't think it impacted sales as severely as one might think, but I I don't think it, it certainly isn't helping. And, and Nintendo they did this in the UK a bit more, but the, ironically in the UK I think the sales are even worse for Wii U right now than in the US. The commercial did a, a lot more in the UK to explain the concept of what Wii U is. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm even remembering when I was little. I remember seeing the Super NES commercial. It says, you know, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, the next generation from Nintendo. Uh, they they really went through to greater lengths to establish that the Super Nintendo is a new product line from the original NES. Uh, Wii obviously was a whole new thing. They even when they went to Wii, they even took the name Nintendo out of the name of the systems, like. You know, Nintendo 64, Nintendo GameCube, and Wii was just Wii, even if they, you know, casually we call it Nintendo Wii just out of, you know, for tradition's sake or whatever. They they made a whole new brand for it, and Wii U, they're trying to obviously to ca carry on the legacy of, and the brand recognition of the original Wii, but it's not, it, 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 there's a whole lot of people who doesn't strike, when you, when uh, someone who's never heard of the Wii U, sees a, a piece of advertising or a commercial for it for the first time, ideally they should come away knowing what it is. For instance, the original Wii commercial. When people saw the original commercials for the Wii, they understood, oh, this is a new Nintendo system where the new thing is motion control. Whereas the Wii U commercials in the U.S., I mean, there were good commercials, but they didn't, they overestimated people's ability to understand basically I think what happened is these commercials are being made by someone who understands what the product is and the, perhaps they got out of touch with the fact that they have to 
explain to other people who don't know anything about this, never heard this before. This is this little 20, 30 second thing is going to be their first time hearing about it. You have to educate them in that short amount of time. And they basically, they, they didn't really do a very good job of it. You know, they said, you know, the all new Wii U and they didn't, they, they need to be more explicit. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know, the, the new, you know, the next generation from Nintendo, you know, this, a brand new system with a brand new controller. You know, this isn't the Wii, this is the Wii U. It's okay, it's okay to say that in the commercials. And I think that's what we're going to start seeing from Nintendo. They have to communicate better. This is the same problem I think they had in E3 2012. And it's basically at E3 2012, I feel like Nintendo had their presentation and they kept telling people, do your own research, go to our website, learn more about the games and the products and what this new system's all about. And people didn't do that. They just watched the one-hour stage show presentation and said, oh... You know, this, there are no games, it's all casual stuff, you know, this system isn't as exciting as it should be. And Nintendo has to basically stop relying on people to do their own research and sell them the idea, what this system is. Not just, don't just say it exists and just leave them, you know, out on their own to figure out. I mean, we have, what, a new Super 3D Super Mario game coming, we have Bayonetta 2 coming, you know, we have Game & Wario coming, Pikmin 3, it's not like they're not going to be you know, Watch Dogs is coming. It's not like they're not going to be games on this system. And we're basically, it all depends on E3 2013. Nintendo basically has to... And the thing is, I think we've seen... Nintendo's been a lot more frank about what they will and won't... About what's coming for E3, based on the sales not being nearly as good as they ought to be. And I think we might even be getting some leaks from Nintendo basically having to you know, talk to the retailers and say, like, oh, you know, all these, these big games are coming, you know, don't get scared, you know, the system's going to move systems once we have all the games that people are interested in, the games that actually sell millions of units. Uh, and as I think we've, I think Nintendo learned a valuable lesson about the new Super Mario Brothers series. Uh, basically, the new Super Mario Brothers series, it's it's been a blockbuster on every system it's appeared on, but they cannot launch a, a whole s platform based on that. And it's a shame because they finally, for the first time since 1996, have a new Mario game with a new home console. And it's a game that by all previous stand, you know, performance of the games in the series sold, sells millions of systems. But those were systems that already had momentum, were already doing well on their own. Not something that is looks too much like New Super Mario Brothers Wii for people who aren't, you know, well informed about video games, and frankly, uh, doesn't, um, you know, it's a Mario, the new Mario Brothers series. It's an arcade series. It's not, you know, a revolutionary series where every, each one is fundamentally different from the, the next one. It's a formulaic arcade series, and that that's there's nothing wrong with that. That's just what it is. You're 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 buying into, you know, with the series, but. Like, a game like Mario Galaxy, a game like Mario Sunshine, Mario 64, okay, that was a unique case, that was a unique innovation, they cannot replicate the sort of magic or excitement that surrounded Mario 64, but, you know, with Mario Galaxy, you know, it was a new idea, Mario Sunshine, it was a new idea, Mario 3D Land, it was a new idea just in the way they, it was the first 3D Mario game where they structured it like the classic platformers, and just sort of... Mario 3D Land, even though it didn't have a major, like, gimmick to it, aside from technically, you know, the, the uh, stereoscopic 3D, which is not essential to actually play through the game, but it was a new way to experience Mario. And that's what gets people excited enough to make Mario a killer app enough to launch a new system. Even if Mario Brothers U is selling well and it's going to, you know, it's going to... I think this, is gonna, this game's going to be around for a while. It's going to be one of those evergreen games, but not like one of those chart-topping evergreen games like the first new Super Mario Bros. Wii was. Uh, basically, you know, E3 has to come. They ought to, I say they ought to pack in Mario Bros. U with uh, the Wii U. they got to basically start from scratch with the advertising and basically explain to people what this system is. They've already sort of started that. They have this pamphlet where they says, you know, a list of features. And it's like, oh, these are all the things that Wii U does, and these that the Wii original Wii can't do. To explain, you know, this is a new system that has a whole bunch of new things going on that the original Wii doesn't have. 
And while I'm on talking about Nintendo systems not selling well, I might as well talk about the Wii Mini that launched in the UK recently. Not too very great fanfare. I'm telling you, the Wii Mini, it's it should be a winner. This should be like the perfect system to buy for you know a younger kid is ready for his or her first game system. Like I. I mean, I'd love to be able to get a Wii Mini for, you know, a, a nephew or a younger relative who's ready for his first game system, to get, bring it home, download a few classic games to it, pack in, what, like, Zelda, Mario, you know, and Donkey Kong, you know, a few, uh, and that would be, a, like, a great first system for a kid, but the thing is, y you cut the Y, the, by not having Wi-Fi in there, you eliminate the virtual console, which is one of the main selling points, one of the main things that makes the original Wii such a good system. If, it, if the original Wii, I'm looking at my Wii over there if you're wondering what I'm staring at, you, I would not be playing the original Wii at all today if it were not for the virtual console. And they cut the Wi-Fi from the, uh, the Wii Mini, they neutered its ability to access the internet, and to make things worse, they, they didn't even really revamp the menu system. So when you turn on the menu for your... The menu for Wii is based around the idea of having all these different games and all these different channels populating your channel screen just so you can see that all your system has to offer. Whereas with the Wii Mini, all you have is the game channel, I think a menu channel, and I don't think much else. And so you have this very... <laughs> this very plain looking barren uh, channel screen that just sort of remind when I see that I when I looked at videos of the Wii Mini I'm like just seeing that and knowing that you'll never fill up that channel page with all these different virtual console games and different channels it just sort of it just seems very lazy to me I mean if you're not going to include Wi-Fi at least it make the interface look like the interface makes it look like you're getting a neutered Wii and that just either make it redesign the interface to suit the fact that the system won't have additional channels for it, or the better yet, put in the Wi Fi. I'm telling you, if you put in, if Nintendo takes the Wii Mini, puts in, puts the Wi Fi back in there, Nintendo's engineers, they have good engineers, they could squeeze the, the Wi Fi back in there. I don't care if it costs 10 or 20 more dollars, the value is worth it. Put the Wi Fi back in there and have a whole list of budget games. You know, they have all they have this whole library of budget games they can put there. Mario pack it in with Wii Sports and Ma Mario Galaxy. Have Donkey Kong Country Returns and uh the have they need all those games that made the Wii what it was. All those casual games, all those main Nintendo first and second party games, make them tw 30 even $20 and you know, pack a couple in there with the system and make a good advertising campaign. And I think the Wii, Wii could put, I think, easy, a good deal of additional units onto the Wii's sales. They don't, the Wii's sales don't have to necessarily be over. They could easily squeeze a few million more systems out of the Wii Mini if they handle it right. And I don't think they're going to go back and add Wi Fi to the Wii Mini. And it's a shame because I think the toy like look of it is great. For you know, younger kids, it's you know, it's classic Nintendo. It goes back to the GameCube, the Super Nintendo, the uh, original uh, Famicom in Japan, and it's just a shame that they've kind of mismanaged it. And without Wi-Fi, they might as well not not bring it out in the U.S. And I don't think they're going to after the way it's. I don't think it's been selling very well in Canada, and it's not been selling very well in the U.K. So uh, that's it for now, and thanks for watching.